coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Nintendo's boil em, mash em, stick em in a stew. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellers, and I am joined, as I am always joined, by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going great. I am very excited for tonight's silliness. But before we get too much into it, Mm. I want to talk about, like, another bit of silliness that I watched uh, last night. I had missed it when it was originally in um, Awesome Games Done Quick this past week, but there was a super mario 64 blindfolded run Ooh. where um the runner uh bubsia got it was like a 16 star run and they did it blindfolded and it is pretty remarkable like it's really cool to watch so i highly recommend it so a 16 star run obviously means that they're glitching through a lot of it right well so i don't i haven't i haven't finished it but i don't think that they are uh attempting to get they, they don't try to beat bowser in those 16 stars oh, okay, okay i think they're like working on like building this run out oh and interesting. so they're up to like 16 stars i don't think they're trying to get like the 70 or whatever to yeah, like, yeah. beat bowser i think there's only one i haven't finished it but i think there's only one bowser fight uh um, wow. in the 16 star run but it's really cool like i was holding uh i'm I think he has like 10 stars at the point that I'm at. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm like holding my breath um, <laughs> at some of them because he's like That's making amazing. these jumps and you're like, this can't be possible. And it's like so like razor thin close, but he pulls it off. It's really cool. Um, That's the thing about that that actually seems the most difficult or the most impossible to me is that um, the very first star that you have to get is uh, the, the King Babam in Babam Battlefield. Um, and like, he's a little bit random, right? Like, how is the, I guess you can still hear. Yeah, he does it all off of, he does everything off of, um, sound cues. It's really cool. It's the whole run is about an hour and it's worth checking out. Um, that is one that I will check out. Thank you, Mark, for directing me towards that. Um, here's something that you should not thank me for directing you to, uh, towards, towards, I had a very hard time saying that. My copy of Sonic Forces, would you like to borrow it? Um, this is Sonic Forces, of course, for the Nintendo Switch. Um, if you'd like to borrow my copy, you can try, you can get on the list to borrow it by emailing us at Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com. At gmail.com. And giving us a mailing address where I send it to you you play it for as long as you want you send it back i paid for that postage uh it doesn't cost you anything uh but there could be some con some consequences right i mean is it a consequence if you accidentally maybe not accidentally if you unbeknownst to you get untitled goose game i mean i think so i think if if you mess with the goose you're gonna get consequences right that's uh i think it says that on the box (laughs) which you won't see because patrick's copy of untitled goose game shows up in the Sonic Forces box as well. Yeah, it's a, uh, look, it's, it's a dirty trick, and I refuse to apologize because the program is perfect. Um, here's something, look, here's something else that is going on that we need your emails, we need you to contribute. Um, we are coming up on our 433rd episode of this show, and obviously the number 433 is meaningful to us because every other episode we do a segment called 433, where we don't talk about Nintendo for four and a half minutes. Um, And we always come up with those topics, um, but we are now calling on you, the listener, to suggest topic ideas, things that we can talk about four minutes and 33 seconds that have nothing to do with Nintendo. Um, Mark, we uh, put out the call, uh, started putting out the call for this on Tuesday's episode, uh, and at the time of recording this episode, Wednesday evening, um, we have but one suggestion, and I can already tell you, it's going to be a challenge. So <laughs> I need everyone else just give us your best. Look, we when we are doing these things, we try to keep it within the range of like things that we know about. Um, uh, I, I think people should see this as like a, they should throw down a gauntlet here, figure out something that'll be weird for a, hard for us to talk about performance and 33 33 seconds we will not let you down 
Yeah, that is uh, just like the Sonic Forces borrowing program is yes. the perfect program. I don't know that I'll go so far as to say that the 433rd episode will be a perfect episode, but we will try our darndest. Absolutely. And, you know, if uh, the, the original spirit of 433 is four minutes and 33 seconds of silence. <laughs> so if we truly have nothing to say, we will accurately perform <laughs> the piece as intended by John Cage. So you can send those to us by February 9th. Try to get those to us by February 9th. Uh, so that way we can include it in the show. Yep. And you can send those to the same email address, Nintendo Cartridge Society at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Or you can tweet at us at Nincart Society on Twitter. All right, Mark, let's get into the topic of the show. We are casting the Lord of the Rings with Nintendo characters. <laughs> Mark, this is a goofy one. This is, uh, this is, I mean, you mentioned silliness already, but like, this is, this is silliness. We're being silly. So that's right. And this is, uh, not without precedent. We, uh, that's right. did this exercise back in November of 2019 before, uh, The Rise of Skywalker came out, the, uh, Star Wars Episode Nine, and, uh, where we cast Star Wars with Nintendo characters. We were so young um, and so excited then about Star Wars. <laughs> I know we really were like we were I was in the midst of uh, Star Wars mania that uh, didn't let up for quite some time. Well, actually, maybe about like a month later. Right. Uh, <laughs> then it let up. But I, I, I feel like I personally and maybe we can revisit uh, Star Wars because I'm sure there are characters that we didn't uh, really dig into. Um, but now that we are in a uh, post Mandalorian world. Um, and, uh, you know, there are like other games and shows and stuff that, you know, like I have gone deep down the rabbit hole with, uh, with Star Wars, as I know you have reading a lot of the books and the comics and stuff. Um, so that we may need to do like a, an extra nerdy edition of that at some point. <laughs> um, but also in either January or February, we did, um, cast a handful of musicals with, um, Animal Crossing characters. If any of that sounds like it's up your alley, um, you know, you listen to the show, you know, <laughs> you know that you like that sort of thing. Um, and so, yeah, now we are going to tackle the Lord of the Rings. Um, a lot of characters in Lord of the Rings. Um, Mark, what, you know, we, we talked on a, on a recent episode that you have just uh, rewatched the um, film trilogy. Not the uh, extended edition, because, of course, you are a coward. Um, but uh, it's, it's, is, uh, is the movie trilogy your sort of, like, line into them? Or, like, how is, is, is that how you know um, the series? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, uh, I read the books after like the first movie had come out or maybe the second movie yeah and uh read the books tried to read them again a few years ago had difficulty getting into it hadn't seen the movies for about a decade rewatched them over the holidays yeah and uh like m my uh i remembered why i liked them so much and uh so I'm, I'm excited to go through this exercise but it is for sure if anybody here is like a tolkien scholar or is really familiar with the books I am totally basing this off of their characterizations in the movies and then like these characters yes. arcs in the movies. Yeah. And I think that's, I think this is one of the places where, um, except for among the like hyper Tolkien nerds. And I mean like the Tolkien book nerds, um, that like the movies have basically supplanted, um, the, the books as far as like how everyone is characterized. Like, I don't think you can, I don't think people consider Gimli to be, like the sort of like straight edge dwarf that he's depicted as in the uh, books. Like he's got a goofy bent to him uh, because mm -hmm. of these movies. Like that's just always going to be part of it. Legolas is going to be way more of a superhero uh, forever because that's how he appears in the movies and not necessarily in the books. Everyone else I feel like is pretty faithful. I think, I don't know. It's also been like 20 years since I read uh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um Every every couple years, I pick up my copy of Fellowship on my bookshelf, and I'm like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it, and you know, when when it gets to uh, the songs, I'm just gonna skip ahead two pages. Um, and I never get like I get out of the Shire, um, with uh Frodo and Sam, and then I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so here, uh, Mark, let's run down the list of characters that we will be casting with Nintendo characters. Uh, let's just go back and forth reading uh, from the top of our list. Starting, of course, with Frodo. And Sam. And Gollum. And then Merry. And Pippin. Aragorn. Legolas. 
Gimli, Gandalf, Theoden, Eowyn, Eomir, Elrond, Arwen, Boromir, Faramir, Denthanor, uh, Denethor, Denethor. Uh, and Saruman. Um, Those are the characters that we know for sure that, that we have both prepared um and we will figure out you know we'll we'll come up with we each have a list but we're going to come up with like the ultimate list uh the the most correct list of nintendo characters and if there are other characters that we decide like hey uh, i can't believe we didn't cast tom bombadil uh you know then we'll just be like peter jackson and not include him (laughs) and i think that's just the way it goes (laughs) um so mark let me let me ask you if you put any sort of restrictions on yourself when thinking about what constitutes a nintendo character so I didn't. I think I ended up with all first party uh Nintendo characters. But yeah. there there are a few that like I went back and forth on but ended up like not including um that were like I had some like Castlevania characters and stuff like that yeah. for some of my picks, but uh I think I did end up going all first party Nintendo. Now James Bond isn't in your list, right? <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> um, okay, Mark, where would you like... He's not. He's not. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> where would you like to start? So I think we should um, start at the bottom and work our way up. I think we should start with like the lesser characters and then end with our like main heroes. Sure. So do you want to start with this like um, uh, Boromir, Far- Faramir, Denethor um, trio? Yeah, let's talk about Gondor. I feel yeah. like that's a good place. Yes, let's talk about the 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 Lords of Gondor, um, the steward and his sons. Um, these are, of course, uh, you know, characters that represent sort of like bigger uh, pieces. Uh, like one sort of represents each of the three movies, which I always thought was so cool that like Boromir is like the first movie, Faramir is the second, Denethor is the third. Um, but uh, do do you have any of these that you felt really good about, Mark? So let's start with Denethor. Um, mm. My pitch. For Denethor is Cranky Kong from the Donkey Kong Country games. I think he has that curmudgeonly, like, edge of madness type vibe. Like, I think he could really sell it. Yeah, that. So, uh, Cranky Kong is obviously a great pull. Um, this is a world full of old men. Um, and so, like, it will not surprise you to learn that I have uh, applied Cranky Kong elsewhere mm, in my mm-hmm, cast list. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think. I think yours is probably better. I I sort of came at this one sideways. I I was like, I want someone who is uh, royalty, maybe driven to the edge of madness by something. Um, but maybe I went I, I went with a, a madness that's more sad than it is like violent. I chose Rosalina to play mm, Denethor. That's really um, interesting. Yeah, it's it's interesting, but like. I don't know. One of Denethor's defining traits is like he doesn't care about his sons. Specifically, he doesn't care about Faramir. Right. Um, and so, uh, you know, that she is such a maternal figure and seems to care about all of the the Lumas. Um, she would never choose to play like pit two of her Lumas against each other. Um, so maybe I was playing too much against type and like Cranky Kong's really the way to go. Yeah, I, I guess I feel like like Rosa. If I'm imagining, okay, this is kind of dark, but if I'm imagining Rosalina <laughs> being burned, you know, yes. like on a pyre, I'm imagining more of like a Joan of Arc figure than I am like uh, like sure. someone who's just like um, trying to basically like burn the whole world down, like doesn't care anymore. I feel like Cranky yeah. Kong is more of the like, just light the match, baby. Yeah, Cranky Kong sees his city falling and is like, I know I'm the only hope to save everything, but instead I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah, yep. Um, I think that's good. I think that's legit. It also makes me think that I really want to see uh, the actor John Noble play Cranky Kong <laughs> uh, because that sounds beautiful. <laughs> um, okay, so then uh, so Cranky Kong, we're locking that in. I think that's the right choice. Um, it means I have to make a different decision about something else later on. Um, but uh, my Boromir and Faramir choices sort of go together. Um, Mine as well, yeah. So I, uh, 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 my Boromir, I chose Dimitri from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh. And for Faramir, I chose Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Both of them, of course, after the time jump. Yeah, that, that's interesting. So I don't, uh, I played through the, um, oh man, I'm blanking, Blue Lions? That has to be Blue, right, right? Yeah. Golden Deer, Blue Lions, and Black Eagles. Right? Yes. So I, 
I played through the Blue Lion, so uh, Dimitri was like my dude. Um, but I, but in that, I don't think I saw like cl- adult Claude all that much. So I'm curious yeah. why Claude is your Faramir. Well, just uh, like Faramir is like of the two brothers is like the softer one, mm-hmm. um, which like I, I think is most of where like the uh, the um, comparison ends. Right? Is yeah. that like um, Claude is like a, a little bit of a, a a softer character, but Claude almost like uh, goes all the way to being um, you know a uh, an affable like fun you know like they, that's one of the things that like Faramir is missing is that like he's not a super like charisma magnet um like Claude is so Claude may be off base but I think Dimitri is just about perfect Dimitri's a, a really and I I don't hate Claude either but um I I think Dimitri's a really really good pick because uh adult Dimitri in Three Houses is very much the type of person who like his whole thing in after the time jump is like he just kind of like really wants revenge and it's not not that boromir wants revenge but like you could totally see um given the opportunity dimitri like making that turn like in that moment of weakness like trying to grab the ring so yeah i i i totally believe that um mine well sorry go ahead one, ahead. one, one one other thing is that he's also got the um like fur coat kind of thing going on um, that uh, we we see on Boromir, and also like you know, uh, Sean Bean obviously uh, plays Ned Stark in uh, Game of Thrones too. So like, I'm just sort of like tying all of these images together, <laughs> of, like a burly man in a big furry coat. Like, yeah, they're all the same. Yeah, totally. So uh, I went in a different direction, I guess I'll say, with um Boromir and Faramir, and my picks for the two are Boromir is Luigi and Faramir is Mario. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Why is Faramir Mario? Because so, he lives? Uh, I was it, for for whatever yeah, for whatever reason it was important to me that they were like brothers and so uh-huh. or like siblings when I was doing this. And so uh um that's part I mean honestly that's partly why. But like I was thinking of the two of Mario and Luigi. I feel like Luigi would be the one if like push came to shove that he would mm-hmm. be like let me try to get that ring right and i think <sighs> i mean mario maybe. would hold fast <laughs> mario would hold fast i mean that that is that is definitely true but i got to put i got to put this to you if you are the father of mario and luigi which one of your sons is the son that you lavish praise on and trust to do everything? And which is the one that you could not give a crap about? Okay, I don't have a great rebuttal for that <laughs> because clearly the answer would be like Mario would be the one that you care the most about. Like definitely Mario's the golden son. Yeah. Mario is the golden son. Yeah, I, I I mean, yeah, I think that's absolutely true. I, I think um I, I'm on board with Dimitri and Claude. Like I, I think that I think those are good picks. Um, all right, let's let let's do that. And then I, the thing is, I I almost sort of talked myself out of Claude, um, with uh the like he's he's just too charming. Um, okay, but I have so Claude like, elsewhere, so I'm okay mm, if we don't want okay. to use him now. So, but I do think that uh, Dimitri for sure should be Boromir. Okay, so now I, I think I think that's right. Um, and I feel a little bit bad breaking up the set because now we can't just like insert your choice because like. Dimitri and Mario doesn't make any sense. <laughs> what if Faramir, because we've already got Cranky Kong in the role of Denethor, what if we make Faramir Diddy Kong? Oh, yeah, that's interesting. I was almost going to, like, I, if we're following this train of thought, I would almost argue Kitty Kong, because I know that Ooh. you and I have a like profound love for the character now, but I think most people don't. And so if you were going to say, like, I mean... Retro clearly was like, which Kong do we don't not need when we're adding them all to Tropical Freeze Deluxe? Yeah, and like Kitty Kong, who? Yeah, okay, all right, I'll, I'll I'll agree with that. That he is he is a an outcast and an outsider, even among the people who should be celebrating him. I think that that is that's the perfect uh, through line. We've nailed that narrative. Did it done? Um, okay, so that means that so far our cast. Is Denethor, <laughs> Denethor is Cranky Kong, Faramir is Kitty Kong, and Boromir, of course, is Dimitri. <laughs> from Family Fire resemblance all the way through, <laughs> all the way through, through and through. Um, all right, let's let's continue moving up the list uh, to Elrond 
and Arwen. So these are elves. Um, they are elves. So this is where I used Rosalina. Our, our, Rosalina was my pick for Arwen. The, the like ethereal lady elf who mm-hmm. doesn't like her arc in the movie, if you want to call it, it's her her presence in the movie outside of uh, the first one is so weird. It's like lots yeah. of like weird flashbacks and it it doesn't really make sense. You're like, okay, I understand why it has to be in here and it doesn't detract from the movie, but it's structurally just insane how she keeps like oh, popping yeah, it's, up. It's a mess that they do. They they try to tell a love story between two characters who n- spend the entirety of the second movie apart from each other <laughs> and most of the third movie and the majority even of the first movie like yeah they have like five minutes of screen it's time wild. together it is yeah. wild <laughs> um so that 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 is interesting i for the arwin position uh chose marina from splatoon 2 mm-hmm. um and that's partially because uh like i wanted someone who like has a little bit of like an elevated status um, but someone who, like, one of the things about Arwen, uh, just in general, is that she is a more active participant than most of the elves, um, especially, like, you know, than, like, her father or, like, the, uh, everyone else in, in Rivendell. Um, obviously, we have the other exception in, in Legolas, um, but, like, Arwen seems to have her own goals, um, and so I wanted someone just, like, a, like, powerful and aloof, but, like, a little bit off kilter, so that's why I went with Marina. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I could totally see that. Like, I could absolutely see her pulling off that sort of... Because I don't think that we see it in Splatoon 2, um, but I do think she could pull off a more, a, like, uh, regality, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Rosalina is a good choice, too. Let's let's talk about our, uh, our Elrons. Um, and see see if we can find some like sort of parody or some sort of my my Elrond is not at all connected to my uh, uh, my <laughs> my neither. Arwen. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, what who did who did you go with? Okay, so I need to preface this by saying that when I tell you who I picked, it is yes. not immediately going to make sense. But what Thank I you. what I what but what you need to keep in mind is I'm mm-hmm. is I believe that this uh, person has range. And that we are only seeing a limited amount of it. It's like when Jim Carrey went from being a comedian to making that weird movie with Joel Schumacher where he is obsessed with like the number 23. Or it's just when... called the number 23, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so people making surprising choices. Mm, and sure. that is, and with that preface, I will tell yes. you that my pick for Elrond is Tingle from the Legend of Zelda series. Now that is interesting. So this would be Tingle's one hour photo. Ex- yes yeah okay. this is tingle like br- bringing it in um maybe a little aged right like uh mm-hmm. maybe like he's in a, a 60 year old tingle but uh i believe that within tingle is the ability to um sh- like really embody elrond um so i i think we like for both of us even though uh, tingle is canonically what 36 years old something like that i believe so yeah his his age is uh, hilariously specific, and uh, uh, it is a trip when you uh, when you lap Tingle, and you're like, "Oh, I'm older than <laughs> he, I'm older than Tingle now." Um, but so my my pick for Elrond uh, would also need to be aged up in order to uh, be Elrondy. But I want Ness from Earthbound, mm. um, someone who is a mostly silent protagonist uh, who comes from a place of comfort. Um, and who has extraordinary psychic ab- abilities um, is, is mostly where, where I, I, I draw all of that from. Um, Tingle is interesting, and you know I want to see Tingle. I want to see Tingle. <laughs> like, I guess end of sentence, right? <laughs> um, but I, I feel like we need to have someone who has proven gravitas. I like Ness, and I feel like the... Um, uh... A, a pairing of Ness and Rosalina, I feel really yeah. strongly about. Like, I think that's a strong Rivendell. Uh, yeah, I, I think so too. So we are putting um, Ness from Earthbound uh, in the role of Elrond and uh, Rosalina from Super Mario Galaxy in the role of Arwen. I think those are good. I think we nailed that. 
Um, and then uh, the next sort of trio of characters um, before we start like really digging into uh, fellowship characters is Theoden, the king of Rohan, or is he a king? I guess he's a king. I think he's um, a king. Uh, Eowyn, his niece, and Eomir, his son or <laughs> nephew. Yeah, Eowyn is his niece that he raised as a father. Um, or sorry, raised as like a daughter. He, yeah, right, he's okay. like her father figure. <laughs> and then Eomir, I don't know, I but I assume son living son one of his sons dies i don't know what the relationship his is. son dies yeah like right at the beginning of the second movie i don't know it doesn't matter <laughs> we're, we're talking about uh miranda otto's character and carl urban's character that's uh, that's who that's who we're talking about here um i had a little bit of a harder time with these I, I i don't know about you mark um i'm just gonna put it out there this is where i deployed cranky kong uh, i wanted cranky kong for my uh theoden king um so uh, who, who did you have in, in the Theoden slot? So Theoden was hard for me as well. What I ended up st- settling on is just any of the transformed kings from Super Mario Brothers 3, because I'm hanging oh, my hat on genius. like his transformation, um, yes. you know, from being, uh, his, being poisoned by the words of uh, Worm Tongue. Grima Worm Tongue. Yeah. Yes. And then um, his transformation afterwards. I'm assuming when the kings are transformed that they are then warriors who could do well at um, the uh, uh, Helm's Deep. Um, obviously a little bit of a cheat because we don't know uh, which one of these kings we're talking about, but I, I think <laughs> I think that's perfect. I think you could do, look, if we're putting this up as like a stage production that it's just, you know, septuple cast and the seven of them just like take turns. Right, like I, you I, do for like yeah. the, for or Annie or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Look, man, there are so many, uh, you know, small redheaded kids in town and they all want to play the role. So, like, they gotta. Um, and so for, for Eowyn and Eomir, I, I cast these together. Um, and for Eowyn, I went Daisy. And for Eomir, I went Luigi. Oh, interesting. Um, and part of the reason I like Daisy for um, Eowyn is I love, uh, you know, like, the, sort of the defining uh, cool moment for um Eowyn is the I am no man and then plunges a sword into uh the uh witch king's head um and just like that sort of like yeah but I got you you jerk I got you uh feels very daisy to me like a very like hi I'm daisy you know <laughs> um she it just it feels it feels like the the perfect role for her so i uh, i also that was the uh, part where i focused on is i am no man and so my pick for Eowyn is actually Samus Aran from Metroid. Okay. Thinking of like, you know, um, the original kind of like reveal at the end of the original Metroid where it's like, mm-hmm. guess what? This uh, character in this armor is like a woman all along, which um, yeah, guess what? was Psych! something like, yeah, exactly. So that, that's, that was my pick for Eowyn. And then Eomir, I went Marth from Fire Emblem. Um, be- mostly because sure. he's a dude with a sword, and uh, so is Aemir. Like, I don't think they don't have much else going on, really. <laughs> no, that's true. It, it it is interesting, and maybe if you and I were better Fire Emblem fans, we would try to just do this whole thing with just Fire Emblem characters. And I think it's totally possible. Yeah, I think it's totally possible, and probably would be a better list than what we're coming <laughs> up with right now. <laughs> but I'm having fun. Let's keep doing this, um, and not totally change our plans, and also our knowledge of Fire Emblem. <laughs> Um, so I have a spot for Samus Aran later that I feel very strongly about. Okay. Um, All right. And it is, I think, going to be a little bit of a surprise, um, but I, I feel very strongly about her there. Um, but it, I think it is possible we could mix and match. Like, I think uh, Eowyn as, uh, Daisy as Eowyn and Marth as Eomir makes sense to me. And I'm sorry, I already forgot. Who was your Aomir? Luigi. Uh, Luigi. Yeah, Luigi. Luigi. Oh, okay. Was my yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I'm. I'm good with that. Daisy and Marth. Yeah. That's a. I mean, that's a power pairing. <laughs> that, that is a power pairing. Uh. Okay. Daisy and Marth for uh Aowyn and Aomir, respectively. Um. Mark. I guess before we get into like the the rest of the, because I think the next. Um, like batch of characters would be Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and Gandalf, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe we should uh cast Soruman first. 
Sure, yeah. Um, so Sauron is like the white wizard um, who uh, is kind of like the foil of Gandalf in mm-hmm. the first film. Um, yes. And he's secretly working with Sauron. Uh, I went with uh, Aghanim from Zelda, Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. Ooh, very good. Uh, could, you know, appropriately menacing, appropriately second fiddle, uh, appropriately wizard. Um, yeah, that, I mean, that may be an impeccable, that may be a perfect choice. In fact, that character may be modeled after Sauron. <laughs> <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, there's another one later where, like, when I was thinking of the parallels i'm like actually i think they just basically ripped off this character but uh yeah yeah that 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 tracks uh my choice for Sauron uh coming at it a little bit different uh i went with tom nook um <laughs> so, someone who is uh you know uh, appears to be a friend at first uh and then you realize wait a minute i am in debt to him millions of bells um he's got like yeah, it's just like you're used to him being a friendly face, but also like there's something going on there where he is going to stab you in the back. He has been, uh, uh, you know, massing resources forever um, and you will never be able to take him down. So that's that, that that was my thinking. Obviously, Tom Nook is not an evil character necessarily, <laughs> not a magical character necessarily. But, but that's OK, because really, like what we're, the exercise we're doing is like who you would cast to play that person. So they don't right. have to. And I, I t- firmly believe that Tom Nook um, would be able to uh, pull that off pull off that yeah. transformation into full evil. I actually, I like it because I can imagine like Tom Nook, like at the uh, end, instead of being like holed up in the tower at Isengard, you know, like being uh, holed up in Nook's cranny because yeah. everybody, you know, like uh, the, your Animal Crossing Island is like sur- now just all water and moat. Um, also, we, we didn't have uh, Grima Wormtongue on our list, but would his Wormtongue be Isabel? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have Isabel later, so I don't want to. Okay, I don't want right, to. All right, all right, all right. We won't mess that up. Uh, but so let's let's go with Tom Nook. I feel like that's that's a good one. That's a solid one. Yeah, I like all it. All right. Uh, which brings us now to this uh, chunk of fellowship. Uh, I, you know, obviously we are addressing the hobbits last year because I feel like the hobbits are they're delicate. We need to make sure that we get them right or hilariously wrong. Um, so Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, and Gandalf. Um, Mark, I'm just going to jump in here and uh, throw this one out before we get too deep into anything else. This is where I applied Samus Aran. I want her to be the Dunedain, Strider, Aragorn, King of Men. Oh, that's good. I, I, I don't like, I don't hate that. I, my pick for Aragorn was um, Zelda slash Sheik from Ocarina of Time. Ooh, also um, good. Because I, I like that, you know, like... Uh, Aragorn is introduced to us as like this ranger and then later yes. you find out oh he's like the rightful king of Gondor and I feel like Sheik has that same sort of transformation where it's like oh, oh shoot, that's this, so like, good this helpful <laughs> character and then like is revealed to actually be Zelda um the royalty of Hyrule so Zelda Sheik is my pick uh I think that that's I mean I I may uh pivot where I put Samus Aran then um, but I, I think that's right. I think that is undeniably the right choice. Mark, that is perfect. <laughs> Cheek flash uh, Zelda. Okay. Legolas, I, this one I don't really feel strongly about. Just like I don't really feel strongly about the character of Legolas. Um, yeah. I tried to find like, you know, like, oh, was there characters between Legolas and Gimli that like might have like a similar relationship? Didn't re- like struggle. Didn't really find anybody. Yeah, it's not so, really there. Kind of where what I ended up with was just focusing on the archery part of it, and so I'm I'm my pitch is Pit from Kid Icarus, but I don't feel super strongly about it. Um, Pit was also Sarah's pick as we were sitting at the dinner table, and she was like, "Hey, what's your show about tonight?" And I was like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and she also pitched um, Pit for Legolas, which like you you know you you're right. There is like a there's a a, a nice solid straight line there. You know um, the the archery the general handsomeness like it's 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 there like I, I i definitely see it um the my my choice when i made up my list was fox mcleod um mm. someone who is uh you know used to being part of like a a team um and uh who you know there's like a sharpshooting element there it's not, it's guns and not uh bow and arrow um 
but there's also just like I don't know the sort of like otherworldly quality of a fox translates to an elf pretty easily. I really like Fox McCloud. I think that's a great pick, and I think he kind of has that like co- a little bit of like cocky attitude, like chip on the shoulder that the elves do. Um, so yeah, I think that's great, and uh, I would love to see Fox McCloud interact with my pick for Gimli, which is Mister Rossetti from Animal Crossing. <laughs> Mr. Rossetti, for those of you who are, have only played uh, the most recent Animal Crossing game, is a weird little mole who pops up and tells you that you shouldn't be turning off your game without saving it or, or something. He chastises you for time travel and stuff. Um, and, you know, because it's not really a the new game is auto saving all the time. Uh, Mr. Rossetti is, of course, out of a job in Animal Crossing New Horizons, um, possibly because he got a job acting in the new Lord of the Rings movie. Um, that's a really <laughs> great pick he's appropriately grumpy he digs like a like a dwarf that's good mark that's good my pick was a little bit more on the superficial side i wanted someone who is a bruiser um who is kind of a joke but like can really pack a punch so of course i went with king hippo from the punch out franchise um this one, you know, you would need to put a beard on him. You need to put a shirt on him, frankly. <laughs> um, which, neither of those things would he be comfortable with. Um, but, you know, he would get the, the physical work done. This may be one where we want to cast Mr. Rossetti to play Gimli, and then his stunt double is King Hippo. Yeah, I think that's right. I, I do like that a lot. <laughs> um, okay, so Mr. Rossetti. Um, all right, Mark, uh, then who is your pick for Gandalf? I really struggled with this one, but I like where I ended up, and it my pitch is the Great Deku Tree from the Legend of Zelda series. Okay, so I also went uh, Legend of Zelda series, and specifically Ocarina of Time. I went with the Owl. Oh, that is also a good one. Um, yeah, that's good. The reason I like the Great Deku Tree is he is a little bit. He's like a father figure for um, mm-hmm. the children of the forest, and I think Gandalf has that kind of like fatherly quality whereas the owl's a little bit more like aloof like i don't know what the owl's deal is yeah but i mean that's also gandalf like gandalf is pretty aloof too he leaves the ring at the shire for according to the books decades while he like sort of lazily investigates what's going on with this thing the movies make it look like it happens over the course of like a week and a half or something but um you know gandalf is gone for a long time um it's and like i don't know the especially like uh if you take gandalf from like the hobbit um where he's like drifting sort of like in and out of the group of adventurers um i think the aloofness to me is part of gandalf well and uh one thing i don't think there really is any like canonical answer as to like what is up with the owl right like why the owl exists why he's giving you hints like it just kind of happens right yeah i think and, so but i actually so think wait, that the- is the owl one of the sages when you grow up I I genuinely can't remember. But but I think but I mean if that is true or if that is not true, I think that is yeah. still like a point in the owl's favor cuz you know like Gandalf not in the movies in my limited history understanding of like the entire history of Middle-earth like you know Gandalf was not Gandalf, he was some other dude or going by another name like hanging out with the gods and then he gets like sent down for a task. And so I can imagine right. that a similar story is happening for the owl where he's just like, Hey, for whatever reason, Hyrule needs you like go down there, talk to this like ch- child of the forest. But trust yeah. us. The thing that I do like about the great Deku tree and you know, we're uh, again, tree beard is not on our list. Um, but perhaps we can just go ahead and do that now um, is make tree beard uh, the great Deku tree, but that there is a, that the great Deku tree dies and then there is a new Deku sprout, which is, you know, pretty well in line with uh, what happens to Gandalf too. Um, But I mean, I think, I think what I'm going to pitch here is that the owl plays Gandalf and the great Deku tree plays tree beard. Yeah. I think that makes sense. I mean, yes, we are typecasting a tree as a tree. Look, man, I don't know what to tell you. Trees got (laughs) trees. No one's going to play a tree better than a tree. So like cast the tree as a tree. Oh my gosh, Mark, are you ready to move on to like the ones that count? Yeah, but let's start with like the demi ones that count. Let's start with Merry and Pippin. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I approach these as a pair, as a pair of uh mischievous characters. 
who are still lovable in their own weird way, Mary and Pippin, Wario and Waluigi. <laughs> is it there a reason why one is like why w- Wario is Mary and Waluigi is Pippin? Um, no, not really. Other than uh, Billy Boyd, the actor who plays Pippin, has like a narrower face, and so I was like, "There we go, he's Waluigi." <laughs> <laughs> so here, my pitches are: Mary is. This is where I used Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh, interesting. And the reason I put him here is because, like, I think, like in the movies anyway, Mary's arc is you know he's uh, all of the uh, hobbits obviously go from like a carefree life to. You know, like they go through a lot and have a lot of like yeah. battle scars from it. But I feel like Mary's in the movies is specifically like combat focused. Like he rides into battle, um, and so that's wh- why I went with Claude because I felt like of the uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses characters, he's the one who co- goes m- comes from like a or g- at least gives off the sense of being just like you know like really carefree, and then everybody after the time jump like goes through a lot. And so yeah. that's why I put Claude there. Uh, Pippin, I, I, I but, but before before we move yeah, on to Pippin, yeah. I just want to I just want to acknowledge that I think that's a great choice, um, and also like very true to the Mary arc, um, and like as we're about to talk about with Pippin, that his arc is also coming from a carefree carefree place, but then uh, uh, having all of these like political stressors, right? Like he becomes like the assistant to you know this mad king of of Gondor. Um, so I, I'm fascinated to hear what, what this choice is going to be. <laughs> well, lower your expectations because it's Hestu <laughs> from, Sky high. <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, Hestu from Breath of the Wild. Sure. And because the, he sings a little song. <laughs> Cause he sings is a little song. Why? He sings a little song. And also like, uh, I think the way that you some, like summed up Pippin's, um, arc is correct but i think generous like i think just like a, in the movies like stuff just happens to him and i don't really Absolutely. know that it like like it's like he looks into the palantir he pledges himself to uh denethor but like it doesn't it doesn't really add up to anything and so that's why i was like well who's just like kind of like a carefree character has to well i mean but it doesn't add up to anything in the same way that like mary's actions don't really add up to anything you know, he uh, also much much like Pippin, he sort of just like falls backwards into like he's gonna be riding into battle with the riders of Rohan, and he doesn't like he kills an orc or something, but like you know who who cares? That's totally true. And in like all of the characters, like when they go back to the Shire for the like and like free the Shire in the book, like not the movies, um, right? Then that is kind of like where it all comes full circle, and like the movies don't really get that closure for like some of these characters. So I don't really know what to do for Pippin because uh, Hestu, I, I, I don't love, I'm not in love with Hestu right, and right, right. Uh, while Luigi on his own, maybe not like the best fit either. Is there like a um, Paper Mario like helper or advisor character that we're overlooking? Um, someone who acts as like, uh, like my, my first thought here was like um, from the Mario and Luigi series, um, Fawful. Um, being like the sort of like side villain, but like you know, I I, I don't really like the idea of casting uh, a villain to play um Pippin, but I just like someone who is a side. This could maybe be Toadette. Ooh, yes, I really like Toadette. I well, think that's let's a great go with Toadette. Pick. Yeah, Toadette for Pippin. Um, which brings us, Mark, to Frodo, Sam. And Gollum. Before we get to that, are there any other characters that you would like to? Because I feel like they're they're it, right? Like once we once we have cast those three, I don't want to talk about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sauron, uh, the yes. the big bad of the series, and my pick for Sauron is Gygus. Gigas, however you say his name. I even looked it up online, and as far as I can tell, there is zero like a consensus on how this character is. Um, name is pronounced, but Gigas from Earthbound, the kind of like main villain who yep. is this like nightmare, amorphous, like screaming skull, uh, that you fight. It's very odd, and I think like has that same sort of just like nightmare energy as Sauron. Yeah, I think I think that's that that's pretty perfect. Uh, I mean, I I think 
a lot of really a lot of Nintendo villains would be good for this. Um, the uh, what's the name of the uh main boss in Smash Ultimate that like another like sort of amorphous like fly floating thing in the sky? Oh, I oh I'm not sure. Yeah, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and like Zoda from um Star Tropics would also be good for this. Even Ganondorf or like Ganon Calamity Ganon um would be a, a a good pick too especially because like we mostly see calamity ganon as just like a thing in the sky like over a castle uh, um, yeah and i feel I, I think i feel like there's like a surprising number of like kirby bosses that are this like ultra <laughs> cores yeah. as, as well <laughs> uh but let's let, let's go with a uh, gigas gigas whatever it is um because that sounds good uh to me um there there are the three other characters that i i uh did a little casting for we don't have to do them uh if 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 we don't feel like it uh, Galadriel, uh, Kate Blanchett's character, um, from these movies, uh, another, like, disconnected elf character, um, maybe even more so than Elrond. Um, I went with Emerin from, uh, Fire Emblem Awakening, who is, uh, a, a little bit in the role of, um, you know, in Three Houses, all the characters that have green hair who, like, work for the church. Mm -hmm. Um, she's a little bit like that, but, uh, is more protective of, like, her domain, um and uh there there is a um horrifying scene like halfway through the through the game where the mad king of that game uh kills her like executes her in front of everyone it is a nightmare um and then i also came up with casting for bilbo and shelob i i really want to hear these so bilbo i went straight down the middle man make him mario mm -hmm. bilbo should just be mario we we want to love him like immediately without any kind of context. Uh, that's Mario. I like this. I like this, and you'll probably find out a little bit why. <laughs> uh, and then uh, for Shelob, Shelob, the uh, giant demonic spider guarding the secret cave into Mordor. I went with Judd the Cat from Splatoon. <laughs> that's undeniably true. I think that is undeniably good casting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> mostly just for the visual mark should we get to the the final uh the final three characters uh two hobbits and one former hobbit yeah let's do it or something very much like a hobbit mm -hmm. i guess uh, mm -hmm. smeagol not necessarily a river hobbit <laughs> uh okay mark how, how how did you approach these here um they're all from disparate series so there's no Me like too. really like harmony in any of them which one should we start with do you want to start with Gollum, smeagol Let's let's go Sam Gollum Frodo. Okay, cool. Because I feel I feel like Gollum's really important. Like getting the casting of Gollum right is uh second, I think, only to Frodo. So Sam, I went with this is where I used Isabel from Animal Crossing. Oh, very interesting. Because to me, like, you know, uh Sam is just like an undeniably good character. Like he's yes. like like it's just it's unbelievable. He's almost like annoyingly good but like in the movies it to me it works so well like i yeah. like when they're climbing up mount doom at the end like i always get emotional like i just think it's so good um and i feel like isabel has that like can do attitude that sam has to have yeah i mean the, i feel like the the sort of difference is that like sam accepts that he needs to have the can do attitude and isabel like just exudes it mm -hmm. um like that they it's it's the same result, but like slightly different energy behind it. For Sam, I went with Captain Toad um, because he is afraid. He is, he is terrified of every step, uh, on every step of his adventure, and he has limited capabilities to take on the things that are scary in front of him, but he does it anyway. Um, you know, he can't carry the ring, but he can carry you. <laughs> Yeah, and I I think that that's a very good pick. I feel like um I guess we're not talking about Frodo yet, but like that is that to me was an important element of Frodo as well. Mm, yes. Yeah, no, I I think that's that that's a I good mean, point too. I mean, not like uh I think the difference between Frodo and Sam is I I think there are differences in character, but I think that like yeah kind of like acceptance of like this is scary but i have to do it is important for both characters a a absolutely i think the the other thing in uh like the sam column that makes him like captain toad is that 
you know, when you first encounter Captain Toad in Super Mario 3D World and then later in uh, Mario Odyssey, um, he is doing things to help the hero, right? He's collecting either moons or stars so the hero, so Mario, uh, can collect them and go on their journey. Obviously, it's a little bit different in Captain Toad Treasure Tracker when he's the star of his own game. Um, but just like him being that support character is sort of built into who Captain Toad is. Yeah, I like that. I think Captain Toad's a great pick. Okay, uh, so we're going to go with Captain Toad. Uh, Isabel is also a very, a very good choice, and I never want to uh, poo-poo an inclusion of, uh, of Isabel. <laughs> um, moving on to Gollum and Smeagol. I... This one, I had two characters that I really went back and forth on, but this is the one mm-hmm. that, like, when I actually thought about it, I'm like, oh, this character, I think, is actually pretty much exactly an analog in a lot of ways for, like, Gollum Smeagol. And so the, the two that I went between were um, Happy Mask Salesman and the Skull Kid, and where I ended up yeah. was the Skull Kid. Skull Kid is, Skull Kid is perfect and probably undeniable. Um, we'll, let, we'll, we'll talk uh, about why the Skull Kid is so great. After I throw out my answer, which is mostly a joke, um, but I'm thinking Gollum. Disgusting. Uh, uh, a horrible <laughs> creature that no one should want to spend any time with. So, of course, I nominate King K. Rule to play the part <laughs> of Gollum. A miserable, scaly, awful person that no one wants to spend any time with. I th- Obsessed I mean- with gold and treasure. <laughs> and I think could bring the gravitas necessary to the role. Yes, um, but let's get back to the to Skull Kid because I think this is undeniable. Well, Skull Kid's story is like very similar to Smeagol's. Basically, he's like a happy-go-lucky kid um, in the forest. Comes across the mask salesman, sees like Majora's mask. Basically, gets like obsessed with it. Um, like steals it away, and then later, you know, we see that he's put it on, and he basically has just like been um, taken Corrupted. over by the yeah. mask. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I, th- I think to, to this point, like, Majora's Mask could just be our one ring, you know? Like, if, totally. if we are then also uh, doing all the prop work from Nintendo <laughs> objects, we're not going to do this. But, but if we did, I think uh, Majora's Mask would, would be the, the stand-in for the one ring. Totally, totally. Um, which brings us to the main event. Brings us to Frodo Baggins of Bag End. I don't feel great about my answer now that we've gotten here. Um, I think it was the last one that I wrote down. Um, Frodo was hard. I really, Frodo's hard. Fr- I really struggled with Frodo just because, uh, like, Frodo, it's a weird determination, right? Where he's, like, very naive, but he feels the sense of, like, responsibility and duty in the beginning. And so he does it, and then just, like... Uh, so much of the rest of his story is him just being like in pain and wanting yeah, it to end just and just having suffering to suffering like for yeah. go for it. And weirdly, there's not a lot of Nintendo characters um, who really fit the bill. <laughs> who just suffer forever. Yeah. <laughs> there are very few characters like that. So the, the thing that I put down here, which I don't really want to advocate for, is a reverse Zelda slash Tetra from the Wind Waker. Um, you know, when... The thing that's so weird about uh, Zelda's role in Wind Waker is that she starts off as a pirate, as like the king of the pirates, um, or not the king, but like she's the captain of a pirate ship. Uh, she's adventurous. She gets stuff done. Um, and then eventually she turns into uh, Zelda, or is, is revealed to be the Princess Zelda, um, and sort of like settles into the, you know, like comfort of, of being royalty and having like magic powers. And I feel like Frodo's journey is a little bit the opposite of that. He never gets to like a happy-go-lucky adventurer uh, place that like Tetra is, um, but like you know he starts off a proper hobbit um, and then uh, just suffers forever. Um, so that that's why I went with Zelda slash Tetra, but it's it's a reverse version of of that. Mark, how, how did how did you do this? One? So where I ended up netting out, even though I used him earlier, oh, we didn't go with it though. Is um, I I ended up going with L- Luigi, like from Luigi's Mansion. And the reason I did that, um, kind of like what I talked about with Sam, was just that idea of like, okay, mm-hmm. Luigi is obviously kind of like we talked about for Captain Toad, is that like he's obviously very, very scared to have to be yes. doing this, but like continues to do it anyways because he knows it has to be done. Yeah, that and that that's legit. And also like 
uh, I know that we cast Gandalf as the owl, but like, you know, uh, Luigi has like an old man uh, advisor in the form of Egad. Um, so like Egad could have been a Gandalf. Neither of us went for that. Um, I still like the owl, but, uh, you know, uh, they, they, that's just like a, a, another parallel there. I think Luigi's probably the way to go um, on this. Um, I, I feel really good about that. Mark, should we run down our complete cast list for the Lord of the Rings as played by Nintendo characters? Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, it is readily apparent that if this were the cast in the movies, that it wouldn't have just won the Oscar for the Best Picture with Return of the King. They wouldn't have waited. They would have uh, given to it for Fellowship of the Ring. (laughs) Exactly. Two towers all all along the way. (laughs) All three movies would have won 18 Oscars each. Um, also, as, as we are going through it now, let's also try to imagine the actors who actually play those characters playing the characters <laughs> that are playing the Nintendo characters. For sure, playing. yeah. And no mocap. It's all makeup. That's right. That's right. Uh, so Frodo is being played by Luigi, and an Elijah Wood Luigi is perfect. <laughs> Sam is being played by Captain Toad. Uh, Gollum is being played by the Skull Kid. Mary is being played by Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses. And Pippin is being played by Toadette. Gotta say, I love that we have uh, both Captain Toad and Toadette uh, in the main four Hobbits. That's perfect. Toads are definitely the Hobbits of um, Toads are the Hobbits, the ma- man. <laughs> Mushroom Kingdom. Uh, Aragorn is played by Sheik slash Zelda. Legolas is being played by Fox McCloud. Gimli is Mr. Rossetti, and his stunt double is King Hippo. Uh, Gandalf is being played by the owl from the Ocarina of Time. And Treebeard being played by the great Deku Tree. Of course. Uh, Theoden, uh, King of Rohan, is being played by, oh, you know, er, in, in rotation, all of the kings from Super Mario Bros. 3. Depends on if you're seeing the matinee or not. Um, yeah. Eowyn is, the da- is being played by Daisy. Eomir is being played by Marth. They both have swords. Uh, in Rivendell, Elrond is Ness. And Arwen is Rosalina. And then in Gondor, Boromir is played by Dimitri from Fire Emblem Three Houses. Faramir is being played by Kitty Kong. <laughs> which means, of course, that Denethor is Cranky Kong. And Soruman, the White Wizard, is being played by Tom Nook. And then Sauron is Gigas from Earthbound. Uh, this is good. This is great. And the only other one that I want to tack on to that is absolutely canon, of course, is Shelob is being played by Judd the oh, yeah. from, yes. from Splatoon. <laughs> All right, Mark, this is good. Uh, let's close this out. <laughs> Mark, would it surprise you to learn that I have now got myself like excited to uh, watch Lord of the Rings again? It wouldn't. They're so good. <laughs> Um, do you see that there were like plot details that came or like a synopsis or something of the Amazon Lord of the Rings show that like just came out a couple days ago? No, I keep forgetting that's happening. Um, I also keep forgetting it's happening until like a news item pops up and there was a second where I was like, oh, cool. Let's, let's see. And then I was like, no, no, no. I can, I can for once in my life see a Lord of the Rings thing and like be surprised by what happened. And have no idea. Oh, that's so fun. Um, all right. Well, so that's how we decided to cast the Lord of the Rings. Um, who, what, did we miss any obvious choices? We never ended up putting Samus Aran anywhere. Um, so let us know, uh, right in at Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com, gmail.com if you have any picks that we missed, uh, or any characters that, that we missed. We never went back and did Tom Bombadil, <laughs> which I stand by. I think that's a good choice. It's Tingle, obviously. <laughs> Uh, what am I doing? I'm trying to close out the show. <laughs> uh, if you remember, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you like this episode, you can share it on Facebook or on Twitter. Uh, wherever you share it, we appreciate you doing it. That helps us out a lot. On Twitter, uh, I am at Patrick underscore Ellers. Mark is at MKE Mitchell, and the show is at Nincart Society. We also have a Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. Olivia Duncan made our logo. Our theme music is provided by Ape at Betty. If you want more of his music, you can get it by going to apipetty.com or by listening right now. For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Eller saying there's one ring to rule them all. And thank you for listening.
name is Will Himes, and I am a ghost writer, meaning I write other people's books for them. And I have a podcast called I Will Write Your Book, which are recordings of my meetings with my eccentric clients, such as a woman blocked after one sentence of a children's book about her dogs, a romance novelist who dislikes sex, and a man proud of having sampled everything in his local grocery store. This podcast has been described as fully improvised, played by some of the best comedians on the planet Earth. Hey, that's pretty good. That's I Will Write Your Book on Campfire Media. Campfire.